Facebook Live this event, feel free. Um, the uh, you know, any good questions? I'm hoping to get you know good answers and stuff like that. The um, uh, if you guys don't know me, my name is Steve Quillian, and I've uh, I'm a uh, I guess you would call it the CEO. Uh, I don't really feel that way, but um, of Wood Window Makeover in Tampa, and I started that business. Um, kind of 2005, 2006, I had just moved here from Texas, and uh, I've always been a carpenter. Uh, you know, growing up, I just was inclined that way, so much so that when my dad discovered that, he did things like 16th birthday, I got a drill, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing, you know, and, you know, circular saws, and uh, I just... I was just naturally inclined to work with my hands, and that's what I ended up doing. You know, I dropped out of school and all that kind of stuff. I ended up going to college, you know, but I came back to this, working with my hands, because it's, it's just what I love. And uh, I'm glad I went to school, because I learned how to communicate, all right? But I learned how to think, and I learned how to process information and study. That's very, very important, okay? The, uh, uh, you know, you can get that a lot of ways, but the, uh, I bought I bought a lot of books. Um, the uh, is uh, part of this education here. Um, if, uh, if this this is going to be a really crammed session, okay? It, we're, it's going to go by like that. So I want to get some things out early. Um, some of the books that have influenced me um, are, I would say, probably to start off. This is one by uh, a guy named John Leake. And this, uh, this is the, uh, this is his Preservation Reports Compendium. It's a, it's a, it's a compilation of a lot of his works. You know, and he's uh, been working since I was in diapers, you know, um, putting these things together for people back before the information age. You know, the internet. I mean, he was writing stuff and helping people restore their windows and stuff like that. He was one of the pioneers, actually, on forums to uh, talk about how to restore windows and stuff like that. Now the, the anyway, that's, that's, that's this. Um, and he's also, you know, been involved with this uh, window preservation standards. Uh, these are good books. Um, there's, a, of course, the Window Sash Bible by my friend uh, Steve Jordan up north. Ch just chock full of information about, um, you know, how to, you know, everything you want to know about how to restore windows. But um, probably my favorite of all time is this one by Scott Seidler. You know, the, uh, I wrote the forward, so. Um, but one, but this one here, you can talk to Scott out there, you know, and get yourself a copy. But when it comes to restoring windows, um, this is probably the most concise, to the point guide, okay? And that's the difference between, you know, this up and coming generation and the previous generation. You know, the, uh, the previous generation full of knowledge, verbose, all right? And just wrote, wrote, wrote. Um, John Lee covered what's in this book, you know, on a small snippet in one page, and the rest is like details and uh, stuff that you might need to know, you might not know. But this one here, um, it's just a basic nuts and bolts uh, version of um, what it, author's name? Scott Seidler. He's here today. Okay. You know, and you can uh, go get go get one of these books. I'm sure he's got them. Get him to sign it. You know, uh, he'll do it. You know. Um, so uh, let's see. The um, what else? Okay. Um, I might, let me see if my phone turned off. Let me see if this is still working. Um, okay. I just want to get all this. Okay, good. Um, a couple of other things for you guys that are interested in carpentry and things like that, because one of the things about windows that is uh, that can be complicated is the carpentry aspect of it, and the. Um, 
the books that have been, um, you know, the best for me are, believe it or not, um, installing and hanging doors. Why, why a book on doors? Well, because they don't have a book on windows. And the uh, in windows, you know, some of the techniques that you would apply to working with windows out in the field, or doors out in the field, also apply to windows. And Gary Katz is the man. You know, see that Gary Katz. I mean, he knows this stuff. As a matter of fact, he's still teaching people about how to work with carpentry, you know, carpentry and stuff like that. My favorite of all time is circular work in carpentry and joinery. You know, that's kind of high level, advanced stuff. You know. But if you guys are interested in carpentry, you get a copy of this book. It was written, you know, in the 1800s. You know, and uh, the information that's in here is, you know, uh, you just can't get it anywhere anymore. So, um, small wood shop, small workshop, um, you know, stuff like that. If you're a carpenter, those are some of my big influences. But I would say, by by, by and large, this book on doors actually for understanding. You know how, especially like casement windows. You know, there's one that's swing open like that. Casement windows. I'd get this book. You know, just so. Anyway. Um. Okay. So here we are. The uh, um, windows. I told you I started about 2005. I bought an investment property, and they uh, they have these old windows in it. And where I come from, we, you know, we save things. And so when I started saving the windows, I didn't think of it as saving the windows. I was just working on them, you know. And people came by and they said, why don't you just replace them? Well, it's like, well it didn't even occur to me that you could, you know. And apparently by the time, you know, I, I got out of college and I started this business, this whole replacement craze had taken place. And I'll tell you this, little about the replacement industry. What one of their goals is, and I've got them quoted as saying this, that their goal is to get the general public to think of windows like appliances to be changed every seven to ten years. Okay? And let me show you why, okay? The uh, the, the Tampa Bay area where we live. Is this is this still considered Tampa Bay kind of inside of the outskirts? Okay. Tampa Bay area area, there's eighty thousand buildings with this type of window, okay? 80,000 windows, and would you say that it would, uh, a fair uh, average number would be 20 windows per building, right? Okay, 21 windows per building, okay? Someone want to get the calculator? How many windows is that? 1.6 million, right? Okay, somebody, let's, let's talk about what an average price for a window is. What's it? Can, would, would somebody pay, has, has somebody paid a thousand dollars for a window? Hey, have you heard of that? Okay, has somebody paid a hundred bucks for a window? Five hundred. Okay, let's say, let's say an average price for a window, any kind of window work, okay, is seven hundred fifty dollars. Say, okay, you go and you buy a replacement window at Home Depot and it costs, you three hundred dollars okay so you have to pay somebody to go and install it how much is that going to cost you you know hundred so you're at four hundred then you're going to have to trim it out and then you're going to have to paint it so that's the low end right so i put in i plug in a number of about 750 bucks okay because i think that we can all safely re reasonably expect that it could cost that much sometimes more sometimes less Okay, so let's multiply that times 750. Okay, $750 times 1.6 million, how much is that? What's that? $1.2 billion. Okay, that's $1.2 billion. $1.2 billion just in the Tampa Bay area in Windows. Okay, now. If I'm a businessman and I know there's 1.2 billion dollars out there, okay, and I want to go and get it, um, I've got a market, okay, and so let's think about a, what what a good marketing budget would be if I wanted to figure out how to get 1.2 million dollars. Uh, let's say 5% revenues is probably good to spend on marketing. 5% of um, 1.2 billion is 60 million. 
Okay, which goes, which really explains how come there's just so much window replacement advertising out there. Because here's what: if they can convince you that the replacement window is an appliance to be replaced seven to ten every seven to ten years, then they've got this recurring cycle of income that just you know we become batteries. The houses become batteries to feed this industry. Okay. And it's perfect, you know, it's perfectly understandable. You know what I'm saying? You know, and so if they are collecting, you know, and cashing in on this $1.2 billion, you know, it's become my mission to cash in on it too, but in a different way. You know, is to restore these windows. And so, but I need help. I can't do it by myself because, you know, I used to work in Lakeland a lot, you know? Um, but you know what happens? You just get spread too thin. You know, it's just me. You know, and so the minute I start putting out any advertising, you know how hungry people are? The minute I start putting out any advertising, okay, I get so inundated with work, you know, that I just can't do it all. You know what I did this week? I, uh, I called up Scott Seidler, my buddy in Austin, you know, at Austin Home Restaurant, or Austin Historical, and I gave him some of my leads I couldn't get to. You know, I just couldn't do it, you know, because the minute you put out any kind of advertising, you know, you just get inundated. That's what happened to Ann, you know, Ann, who got historic window rescue. She just passed out some flyers and man, she can't, she can't look up. She's got so much work to do in the historic window arena. All right. So if you want a side hustle, all right, <laughs> a good money making side hustle, you know, I can hook you up. I can show you how to do it. And you can be making easily in a year six figures, you know, very, you know, in a very small footprint, you know, because it, because look, check it out. This is what people need. Okay, they have this. This is this is their window. Okay, you see that right there? This is their window. This is your window, is it not? Yes. All right. <laughs> this is your window, and you need somebody to work on this. Okay. Now, what kind of investment does it take to work on this window? Okay, um, what do you know? What do you really? How much money? If if you're going to work on this, how much money you got to spend to get started on it? Okay, that's a good question. Okay, so let's so let's get started, and I'll demonstrate a little bit for you. Okay, um, what do we need? Okay, you might need a hammer, right? This hammer at Home Depot is five dollars. All right. I don't recommend getting the chump hammers, you know, the one with the, the magnets on the top, you know, and the extra claws to pull nails out, you know, and stuff to build houses and stuff like that. You just don't need a big hammer. This one is 10 ounces and it's fine, okay? The next thing that I, I need is this little guy. See this? This is just a flat bar, okay? All right? How much do you think this costs? Ten dollars, seven, eight, nine, depending. You know, paint stores might. I found these for as little as four. So with this and this, I'm in for less than ten dollars, and I've got my business going already. Uh, something else I might need. Um, let's see. A utility knife to sharpen my pencil. Um, a glazing putty knife. You see what I'm saying? Um, there's not a big investment. It's just really not. Um, you might want to get something like this. This is this is the most expensive thing I'm going to show you yet. Okay, this is less than twenty dollars at the home store, um, and you know it's got a it's, it's a carbide scraper. This is what you know you would use to scrape the paint and stuff like that. Let me just demonstrate a little bit of that here. There you go. Okay. And, you know, get some of this paint here off so you can repaint it, right? Okay. Paint's expensive. 30 bucks a can, you know? So, so I'm not even to 100 bucks yet, you know? And I'm already making cash with Windows Sash, all right? So, look at this. Now, I will tell you, the most expensive thing I got is that right there, a HEPA vacuum, OK? 
okay? Do you have to have a HEPA vacuum? No. I mean, you know, is, it, is, it, is it good? I mean, I do this all the time, so I think it's, I think it's good to have a, a HEPA, but just a vacuum because someone's got to suck all this stuff up, right? Okay? Probably you've already got a shop vac, right? Um, and if you don't, you can get one for, you know, 60 bucks, you know, stuff like that. Who knows? Um, there's a guy in, what is it? What's, what's, what's this? Um, Kenwood. He restores windows off his bicycle and his backpack. <laughs> and I'm not kidding. His name is um, Alec, I can't remember his last name. But he's got a, he calls his outfit Boone Architectural, okay? Anyway, I'm going to take this here and I'm going to chip out some of my glazing here. Da -da -da. Da -da -da. And I'm going to take out this broken piece of glass because you see it is broken, okay? Um, so. Oh, I'm starting to slow down in my talking. So why don't somebody ask me a question? What do you think about lead? What do you think about lead? I don't breathe it. <laughs> all right? And I'd be very, very careful. And I'd be very careful around kids. All right? Because you guys have already developed. All right? Your brain is there. You've got jobs. You know, you've been through school. You've got your house. All right? You get a little bit of lead, you know it's your own fault. All right? But you're not gonna, you know, suffer too much because of it. But you gotta protect the kids. You hear me? All right? You gotta protect the kids because those guys, you know, that's our future right there. You know, and then, you know, in the lead poisoning, what it does is it makes you dumb. You know, it, it, it retards your, uh, retards your growth that way. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you, know, you want to protect yourself. You know, wear the dust mask and stuff like that. But if you're gonna work around kids, make sure you change your clothes. You know, wash your hands, you know, stuff like that. Don't go home and hug them until you've done it. You know, just really important. I mean, it's just common sense stuff. You know what I'm saying? You know, so anyway. But that's, uh, that's, that's what I would say about that. How's that sound? All right, good answer? All right, so. Um, Could you move the bank bucket? Oh, yeah, sure. I sure will. Yeah, just, you know, we're all people here, so just, if I'm doing something that keep you from learning, let me know. Okay. So what do you think about heat guns? Heat guns? Um, I like them. I think that um, where, where, I would, where I would usually employ a heat gun and where I, where I do is on the profiles. Because in the order of operations that I employ to get this uh, window stripped, uh -huh. okay, the first thing I do is, you know, I, I'll use a scraper like this. Um, for the what I call the flats, right. you know what I'm saying? Right. Um, and then for the curvy part, the profiles, that's where I'll start using the heat gun. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yes, sir. The putty on my windows is not coming out like that. Then why, <laughs> <laughs> then, then why, take, then why take it out? Because I want these cracked and I want to replace them. But it, okay, well, here, but here's the deal, okay? Do you have to always take the putty out? Do you? No? That's, that's what I want to ask. Well, see, but see, that's, that's the thing. Okay, look, you've got weighty glass in there, okay? I'm assuming, okay? And, you're, and, you're, and your putty is holding in that weighty glass. What's more important, the romance of being able to take out that putty um, or saving that weighty glass? It's not, it's not weighty glass. Well, then break the glass and take the putty out. <laughs> that's easy. Glass is cheap, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, you know, I think one, one of the mistakes that people uh, experience in window restoration is romance. I, I, let, me say, let me say that differently, because I don't think that the window restoration, to, you know, you shouldn't be romantic, okay? But at some point in time, you've got to stop rubbing on it, and you've got to put the paint on and get it back in the window. I mean, that's just the way that it is. You know, if you're going to be, you know, if you want to get it done, you know, you got to stop dreaming about what color it was back in the 1930s when you, you know, start standing off, it's like, oh, look, it was green, you know? And then you start to really slow down and look at it, you know, and things like that. And, um, you know, um, okay, I can understand that, you know, but at some point in time, you got to finish the job, 
Yes, sir. When you, when you paint that glazing, does it seal just as well as if it's got some cracks in it, you put some paint into it, it kind of fills in the cracks? Well, check it out. If, if, if you can strip that, that paint off of there that seals it, you know, what you would do, see, traditional putty is nothing more than like a boiled linseed oil and calcium carbonate, crushed powdered limestone, okay? And the, uh, the, uh, the oils have all dried out of it. What do you do? You reoil, you know? Put some more oil on it. And guess what? You refresh it and it lasts a long time. And you know what else the oil does? Repels water. So, you know, th I think I think uh, we, you know, in the in the between the age of these windows and our current situation here, you know, we've lost all of that common sense information. You know what I'm saying? And we want to overcomplicate things. You know what I'm saying? But it's really not that complicated. You know, um, an example of overcomplicating things. I've got a video on my YouTube channel of me taking a window apart completely backwards, okay? Because um, windows were actually designed to be worked on from the inside. Now, how, how did that design happen? Did it happen immediately? No. Over centuries, people figured out that the easiest way to work on these windows is to take them apart from the inside. And so what they did, you know, you've, you've seen how the windows work, right? They go up and they go down. Okay? They have these little tracks in the side that hold this sash frame in, right? Okay? Those tracks come apart. They come apart from the inside. And the first thing that you have to do is remove the first element of the track out there called the window stop. You know, you cut it with your knife, this thing, and uh, you pull it off with this, and the sash pops out. Ta-da! Okay? And then there's another element in there. Uh, that, that creates its divider between the top sash and the bottom sash, you pull that guy out, the top sash comes out. You know, while you're on the inside, you know, first time I did it, I didn't know this, you know? And so what I did was I got a ladder, you know, and I went out to the outside and I pulled off all the trim, you know? And I pulled off all the stuff on the outside of the window and I thought I was cool. And I was cool, you know? I was really cool because nobody else was even doing it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, I was so confident in myself, you know, and, and what I was doing. The, uh, but and I'm sure that, you know, that the old timers are just laughing at me, you know. But I, that's, that's exactly what I did. You know, yes, ma'am. Is there a difference between the thickness of the historic glass and what you get now? Not, real, not really. I mean, you can get glass of any thickness, really. You know, but window. For, for window glass, no, there's not really. Typically, they use stuff that was uh, what we would call single strength. You know, um, you know, the older you get, the more variation you have in the thickness because it was hand blown, and you know the controls weren't really in, in place yet. You know, to make a consistent product over time. Um, but the uh, you know the way the old, the old glass was made, they they blow these huge bottles, these cylinders. You know, they stretch it out and they cut the ends off. They slice it down the middle and uh, they heat it back and begin. It would unfold like this. So the inner circumference of that bottle is less than the outer circumference. And so when it stretches, the inside when it opens, the inside stretches and the <coughs> outside compresses, creating waves. See that? You know, if you got any dirt on the table or any kind of inconsistent, that you know, all that'll get caught in the glass. And those imperfections are now what we prize. You know what I'm saying? Those are very, very valuable. So that's that's how the old wavy glass is made. And you know what? Um, while I'm while I'm on that bandwagon, it doesn't flow. All right. The reason why glass is thicker at the bottom is because craftspeople were smart. You know, and they know that if they got a hand if they've got a hand blown piece of glass that's thinner on one side. They put that up. If they put the heavy side on the top. The glass would tend to break. That's why it's thicker at the bottom, because they were intelligent back then. They just knew <laughs> what they was doing. So, um, okay. So now here I am. I've got this piece of glass out, and it happened without me even knowing. Um, um, yes, ma'am. Can you put this down? I can't see what you're doing. You can't, can you? You know? All right. 
you know what I need to do? I need to plug it in anyway because um, this vacuum here, you know, I was going to talk about this vacuum. I got this vacuum at Home Depot before they discontinued it. <laughs> you know? And um, the, the, the funny thing about this vacuum is that um, I got that, I retailed for like $300. I got that one for $65. You know, but you gotta ask why, <laughs> you know? But I saw this vacuum, Home Depot doesn't sell a HEPA vacuum, and that's weird, you know? With the lead requirements, the EPA has, you know, uh, caused everybody to do, you would think that Home Depot and Lowe's would make it easy for the craftsperson to be compliant with federal mandates, you think? And how come you don't see any of that stuff at Home Depot? When's the last time you went to Home Depot and somebody told you about lead paint? And that you gotta do things in a certain way? When? So, when this vacuum shows up on the shelf and it's for working with lead paint, then they take it off just as fast as it can get. I went in there, I was like, that's the coolest thing. I bought it for, for first one, I got two of them. First one was 300 bucks. And so when I got my next job and I was gonna get another one, they didn't have it anymore. I mean, I'm talking like three or four weeks later, you know? And I, and I asked the guy, I said, guy, where ha what happened to the DeWalt vacuum cleaner? And he says, what DeWalt vacuum cleaner? And I said, well, it's this one that's online. And guess what? It wasn't even online anymore. Isn't that crazy? I'm a conspiracy theorist, okay? But my, and my conspiracy theory is that if Home Depot makes it easy for people like me and you to work lead safe on their windows, then we will, and we'll take business away from their bigger uh, contributor, the window replacement industry. You see what I'm saying? You know, and so if they can keep us small, you know, and out of the picture, you know, then they get to keep it all. I don't want them to keep it all. You know, I want you guys to have, I want to keep, I got a family to feed, you know. They got families to feed. So, you know, um, so, you know, you think about it, okay. You, you think about, think about that for a second. Hillsborough High School, right, in Seminole Heights in Tampa, okay. They spent millions replacing their windows less than 10 years ago, they're already failing, okay? Guess what happens? They get to do it again, you know? Millions, every, every 10, 15, 20 years, they get to cash in a million, million or two dollars, you know, on windows, okay? And who's the chump? You are, your taxpayer, you, you're the taxpayer, you pay for it, over and over and over again. They made chumps out of you people. You know, and you should be offended by that. You know what I'm saying? I'm offended by that. You know, I ain't no chump. You know, so that's why I'm trying to put people in business so we can fight against this conspiracy. All right. So, um, this is cool. This is a scraper. It's got a hollow handle. Okay? So that when you're scraping, it scrapes up your mat. Okay? Okay, enough of that. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Scott sells this too. What's that? <laughs> no, but it is forty dollars. You know, but it's you know, it's, I mean, it's worth it. I think you know. I think it was designed for the uh, the boat industry, like you know, you know, the yacht people stripping the holes and stuff like that started to uh, started using that, and the window restorers got it to hey man, that's pretty cool. So, okay, so now what am I gonna do? Oh yeah, I gotta put this piece of glass in. So how much have I spent so far? Let's see, ten, ten bucks. Um, I don't know, maybe 20 bucks. Um, I, I can just sweep all this. I don't really need the vacuum, right? I mean, but, um, I, I mean, okay, so I gotta get a piece of glass. Let me see. I'm gonna, I gotta take these, um, let's clean this out real quick. 
oh yeah. There's these little itty bitty points here to hold the glass in. Can y'all see that? That's a diamond point. I gotta look at the bottom of my glasses to be able to see it. All right. Um, those guys are really great, um, and they, um, uh, how do you say, they hold the glass in place while the glazing sets up, and, while, and when the glazing fails, so, then, so the glass doesn't fall out. Um, other thing I do, I don't know if I have it with me, but I've got a file that I sharpen this with, okay, because that way it's kind of like, it becomes a, like a disposable chisel, okay. Uh huh. These things are everywhere. How are we doing on time? Uh, 25 minutes. We have 25 minutes left? Yeah. I'm telling you, man, it just goes by so fast. You know? So, somebody asked me about First Friday. Ah, what's First Friday, Steve? Well, First Friday is a event that I started doing every First Friday of the month. Um, I will take you to a project somewhere and show you how to restore windows for free all right i feel like i can do that you know and um, show you guys how to restore a window um, that way you get the field experience you're actually touching it you can act, you know because this is kind of a clinical environment you know i mean you can't really see what i'm doing on this sash you know i'm doing something but you can't really touch it i can take you to a place where you can actually touch it Okay? And if you want some experience, you know, to feel more confident to work on your windows, come see me. Now, uh, the past month after the hurricane, crazy. You know, didn't have a first Friday last month because, you know, lost power for a week. Well, you know how, you know how it happens. The hurricane comes, right? What do you do? You spend a couple of days just hunkering down, right? So I lost that. And then I thought the roof was going to blow off. So you really had to take a good assessment of what's important and that and so i appreciate the hurricane for that because sometimes you need that reminder right you know what's important what are the essentials of mine and so i had to go through all that you know if if the, if the roof blows off my house if the roof blows off my business what's important and so you know covering things up and then the power is off for a week and then you know you know you go to the shop and uh you know you want to do some work but man uh, I'm a romantic, but I, you know, I mean, I, I, run, I use tools to make the windows with and do my work, you know, so, uh, anyway, so I can only sweep the floor so many times, and then the power came back on, oh, yeah, yeah, it was just a mess, you know, I had to put everything back together, and, you know, reshuffle things around, you know, it was awful, you know, and so, I'm still recovering from that, actually, you know, um, try, you know, because people have their deadlines, you know, they have their, they have their needs, and, you know, um, you know, if one thing gets shuffled around, that affects this guy. It was terrible. Anyway, you don't want to hear that. Um, the, uh, um, so, what was I doing? I was doing this window, right? Okay. Um, so, if, I was telling you about First Friday. You can sign up online and register for that. Okay. Um, I, think I've got to, I think I've got to fix it on um, the website. What I'm going to do, I'm going to cut this uh, piece of glass here. Okay. Is everybody intimidated by, by glass? Pretty much. Well, my, my nine-year-old was going to come and he was going to demonstrate this for you, okay? But um, he, 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 uh, he had to get his sleep, so I woke him up at 6.30 this morning and he said, you know, Dad, you know, I'm just not feeling it. And uh, I said, said, come here, give me a hug. You know, he went back to sleep. So, uh, so this is a little $5 cutter. This one's by Fletcher. Um, I ordered it online. I've got a couple of others here. Let's see. Um, you know, this one here is by Husky. This one's by General. I suspect they're the same one, you know, but, you know, who knows. Um, the, uh, the idea about a glass cutter is that it's got a little wheel on there, and that wheel is harder than the glass, okay? And so when you run that wheel across the glass, it scores the glass, okay? And when you, you score the glass, it creates a weakness in that, okay? And if you exploit that weakness by stretching it, it breaks, 
right where the score is, okay? If you compress it, it doesn't break. But if you stretch it, it snaps. So that's what I'm going to demonstrate for you, you know, right here, right now. Okay, so if you can get your sash out on your table, that's what you want to do, all right? Do you want to do this while you're on a ladder on the second floor? <laughs> um, you know, it's up to you if you want to, but me, I want to do what I said, take it apart from the inside, find myself a table and do it this way, okay? Because then you don't have to measure nothing, okay? Steve, how do you know how do you measure? Well, okay, because look, when you measuring and marking glass is notoriously hard, okay? You got to get a sharpie. The sharpie's got a, you know, it's got a real thick line, all that stuff, you know, okay? But if I put my piece of glass on the window, look, it's already see-through. I've got a line here. I got a line here. I got a line there. Ta-da! I need to mark a line. I got a line. So. Um, that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to, um, let's see, how am I going to do this? I'm going to find the best fit for a piece of glass here, okay? And I'm going to put it in about where it goes. Now, some people say, I'm still not cutting. I'm going to get someone to cut it for me. That's fine. I get it. You know, matter of fact, I get people to cut my glass all the time to save shine. You know, hey, glass company, I need 30 pieces, such and such a size. And it comes... You know, I just drop it in my window, psh, done. You know what I'm saying? Life is good. So, uh, nothing wrong with having your glass cut, but don't order it tight. What I say? Don't order it tight. Because if you order it tight, you're going to suffer. Okay? <laughs> Suffering is not good. The, uh, you know, because the glass, it sits on a shelf, okay? A little shelf, and that shelf, on one side it's a quarter inch, and one side it's a quarter inch quarter inch, quarter inch. So you've got a little bit of wiggle room there to play with. Take advantage of that, okay? Don't cut it tight. You can cut it a sixteenth short or so, even an eighth if you're like risky, you know? But um, you don't want to cut it tight because if you've got any kind of something in there, if something's out of square, or something's holding, you know, holding you up, you, it's not going to fit in, okay? So cut it a little loose. You've got some you got some flexibility there. So here I am. Watch this. I'm just going to listen to this sound, okay? This is a really good sound. Okay? Hear it? That is the sound of scoring glass. Isn't that great? So when you hear that sound, it just snaps real easy. Okay? Ta -da. And then, see? Now, I see it. I, I can look down and I can see it's going to fit right on my shelf. And so I could slide it over this way. Oh, and I will. Watch this. I'll make one more score here. Ta da! Isn't that nice? So if I had gloves, I'd let you do it. No, I don't think you want to let him do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're his dad, so I trust you. Um, but I let my son do it all the time. You know what I'm saying? Um, he loves it. Um, so, point is, is you can do it. Okay? If my nine year old can do something like cutting glass, you can work on your window, is my point. So, okay, what do you need to know now? Okay, product, all right? Um, well, actually, there's this guy here. You know what this is? This is a blazing point gun. It works like a stapler, okay? But it shoots little diamond points out the front, okay? Um, you can usually find these online. Um, uh, on uh, like eBay and stuff like that, you can pay $35 to $80 for one. Um, Scott Seidler restores them and sells them. So um, you can get one from him and get a custom color. You know, uh, a friend of mine ordered one and got a pink one. You know, um, but that's good. You know, so um, so that's I'm gonna put that in. Let me see if I got. Um, oh, I got some tool here. Ah, this guy here. This is fun. Steve, why does the head spin like that? This, this is a hammer, right? Yeah, that's because this is it's called it's a it's called a glazing hammer, and the idea is that that. It sits flat. This is a slate chalkboard. Um, 
it sits flat um, on the glass and you can use it to tap your glazing points in um, further like that, okay? Because um, they're going to stick out too far. Ta-da! Like that. There. So, Steve, why do you tap it in? Well, because if you don't, and your glazing point sticks out too far, then you get when you go to glaze it, you're going to get a dunk, and the glazing point's going to stick out. It's going to look ugly. It's going to rust. You know all that stuff. So it's got to be set beneath your glazing. So, all right, how much time do we have? Fifteen minutes. I'm telling you, man, this is going by so fast, so fast. Okay, gloves are pretty important. Um, I'm gonna need a favor from somebody. Um, this is Sarco glazing putty, okay? There we go. This is Sarco, and the Sarco, I use this because Home Depot sells a product called DAP that makes it really, really hard to get into the window business, okay? Their, um, their product sets up so that you can paint it in three or four weeks. This product here sets up in two days, and you can paint it, you know, and you can finish your job. This is, you know, Sarco Multi-Glaze. Um, you can get it from me, you can get it from Scott Seidler, you know. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's the way to go. And what I need is, I, need, I keep water on top, but somebody take that out and dump it, the water out into the uh, yard. It's heavy. Okay. So, um, you wouldn't think that that would be the way to do it, but um, you put water on top of your glazing, it's oil based, they're not going to mix, so it keeps your glazing putty fresh and allows, because if, if not, what happens is you get all these crusties on there, and the crusties, when you mix it in there, creates lumpies. You know, and you don't want the lumpies. You want it to be smooth. Thank you, sir. Very, very much. Okay. And so, um, this is a uh, this is a, some glazing putty here, and kind of cool. Let me just cool off outside. So I'm going to warm up, warm up a little bit in my hands. You know, um, it's kind of like cookie dough consistency. You know. And what you gotta do is you knead it up like this, and when it, you know, if there's any lumpies, the lumpies are gone, you, know, you just take it with your thumb, you know, and you just slide it in like so. And one thing I will do, and I haven't done in front of you, is I will oil the rabbits, the, or the, where the place where the glass sits, or I'll prime it with oil-based primer. Um, I'm not doing it today because we just don't have the time. But the, what you, the reason you do that is because the wood craves the oil and it will crave the oil right out of the glazing you know and cause it to fail prematurely so you want to oil the glazing rabbits when you're when you're restoring your window what, what kind of oils do you uh, typically like linseed oil or something like that you know um, no that that too you want i mean the um, Depending on the situation, you know, um, you will. That, that's called bedding. I didn't do that, I guess, because of time, you know. But you, you, you squish it down into the the bed to create a seal all the way around it, you know. So that is um, what you know what what you gotta do. So okay, so here we go. Got this here. The ball having a ball. Okay. Now, glazing, this is kind of a new putty knife here. Um, there's, uh, there's a lot of little tips and tricks to getting it right, okay? The, the first trip, uh, trip, tip that I'll tell you is um, you have to have a shiny glazing knife, glazing knife. You can't have like rust on it or any kind of haze or something like that because uh, you, what you want is for the metal to slide over the glazing plate to smooth it out. 
uh, if you don't, then you're always going to get, I guess, what you call drag, where it, it, it catches on whatever it is on the knife and it starts to create uh, these little cracks and stuff like that. It's awful. Um, other thing is, is you want to keep as much of your knife on the glazing as possible. Like, um, for example, see, I want to keep a really, really low angle like this so I can get a lot of glazing putty along that line, okay? If I start to raise it like that, then that's going to create um, uh, like a, it's going to tend to pull the putty out. So um, I know you guys can't see this, but I'm, gonna, I'm just going to glaze this real quick and um, get this done. These, uh, I've, got, you know, I've got videos on YouTube that talk about the techniques you know, that, uh, that, you, that you use. You like, you got, uh, you've got push techniques, you've got pull techniques, um, you've got picking techniques because you've got to get the glazing out of there, you know, and stuff like that. Now, the, um, um, the trick to getting a good looking glazing bead is to focus on the corners and work inside, okay? If you focus on the corners and you work in, then the, uh, uh, it kind of it kind of levels out in the middle. If you try to stop at the corner and, and work out that way, that's just much more complicated. So that's what I'm doing right here. I'm detailing my corners. Okay. Uh, and then I'll come in here and I'll pick out the remaining stuff here. And I'm going to show you just in a second something called I call magic dust. It's my own proprietary formula that I bought at Home Depot. And if Home Depot knew I was using it for that, they probably wouldn't sell it to me. But that's, that's, that's my conspiracy talking again. So. Dun, dun, dun. There. Done. Now, you too can glaze a window that fast after you glaze a thousand. All right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. You won't be that fast at first, but give yourself a little bit of time, all right, and and you'll get there. Now, see, that's that's one of the things that I'll talk about is you know as as human beings we're very very intelligent, okay. We've got to give ourselves credit. Um, the windows are not that complicated. They go up and they go down, okay. And if you can make them go up and then you can go make them go down, you've outsmarted the window. Okay? And that's the goal. So beyond that, what makes life easier is something that I call micro skills. Okay? And the micro skills are the little itty bitty things you discover along the way that make your life easier, like using a shiny glazing knife as opposed to a rusty one. You know, can you glaze a window with a rusty one? Yes. You won't like it, you know, but you can do it. Okay? You know, the little things that you learn, you know, how to hold it, all of those things add up, you know, and eventually you've got this skill and you've got this talent, you know. And so uh, I would, uh, you know, I wouldn't be scared to jump in and, you know, play with your windows. Um, I think, it, you know, I think, it, I think you'd benefit a lot from it. I mean, it's, it's a lot of fun. I mean, you can, uh, to me, one of the, one of the best parts of, window restoration. Sometimes, you know, it's late at night, you know, and uh, you know, it's dark outside, there's not a lot of noise going on. You know, you can put on NPR, you can put on some classical music, or you can put on some Led Zeppelin, you know, whatever it is that, you know, you know you're doing, you know, you glaze a window and stuff like that. It's, it's, it's very therapeutic. You know, it's, it's relaxing. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of fun, actually. I mean, some things, you know, are uh, or hard about it, you know, but when you get to that point, you know, that's where the love comes out. And that's where you pour your heart and your soul into it and it becomes an art form. And, you know, that's, that to me is what it's really, really about. And that, and that's, that explains to me why windows like this are so important. It's because they, they contain within them 
the spirit of the craftsperson that put them together to begin with. Okay? Because think, think about it this way. You know, um, you walk into a spire, you know, a, a, a grand house with this nice spiral staircase that a person built. Okay? You know, you admire that. I mean, you, I mean, you know what? You might not have words to explain what it is that you're feeling, but you admire it. You're impressed by it, and you wonder how it happened. You know, and what you are doing in that very moment is you're paying respect to that person. You know what I'm saying? And so that person who put that spiral staircase together, that's what they were intending. That's why they, that's why they poured their heart into it, because they knew that you were going to see it. They knew that it was going to be for the next generation. They knew that somebody was going to look at it. And, they, you know, and, and, and you know, so they're gently whispering, respect me. And you do. They didn't have to be there and you respect them. You know, there's a lot to respect about a historic window like this. You know, that's a, uh, and so that, that's the important part about the late part of night, you know, when you're pouring yourself into this. You know, you're contributing, you know, to what, I, what I'm starting to call the artisan army. You know, you know you, the art, you know, the artisan, you know, starts to come out. And you, you know, you have a living, breathing product that you're now a part of. You know, and that's what that's what you're saving. You're saving, you're saving this, this, you know, these people. You know, and um, you're helping. Uh, what's what we're all looking for? You're helping to uh, uh, carry on. You know, this uh, this precious. Uh, uh, information, this knowledge, this skill, this talent, this art, this love, you're carrying that on to the next generation. You know, because if you keep tearing it out, you know, all this humanity is going to be gone. You know, and these, these robots that make things now. I mean, nothing wrong with a robot making things, you know what I'm saying? But you know what? There's something different about when you touch, when it's touched by human hands. You know, that's so important. Yes, sir. Uh, and can you speak a little bit to sash weight replacement? I sure can. The uh, well, what, what, what's the specific question? How to do it? Oh, how to do it? <laughs> how well, do you get it? How do you get into it? <laughs> well, okay. Remember, remember how I opened up? I told you I tore everything apart, right, right from the outside. That was to get to the weights, okay. right? That's the wrong way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> you, know? <clears throat> you know, and the reason why is because the windows were designed. To, to, when you work on them, to have very little impact on anything else around them, you know, the walls, stuff like that. Because there was a point, because when I took that off, guess what I had to do? I had to fix the siding, I had to fix the paint, I had to fix the connection, you know, all the nail holes, you know, all this stuff I had to fix just to replace the weights. But you know what? When you take the, the bottom sash out, the top sash out, most times are revealed a little door in the side. That doesn't touch anything but that little interior jam, that frame that the the the, the, the window is attached to the sashes, and uh, the uh, it's it's more advantageous to do it that way than to if you're inside you might have nice plaster walls, you know, take that casing off. It will expose the weights, but you'll also expose yourself to a new paint job, you know, on your walls. So. Do all upper sashes move generally? Generally, down here they do. Okay. You know, I haven't run across one that doesn't. So, I mean, every once in a while, I guess you come across that. But they were designed. All of them were designed. Pretty much. You know, there was a time when they weren't. You know, in other regions, it's probably not that way. But here it is. Can you say? Can you suggest a source for a replacement sash if you got one that's kind of goofy? Steve <laughs> William. Okay. Right here. Okay. You know, uh, that's what I do. You know, I, I make replacement window sash. For the rotten sash, and I make it out of a koya. Uh, this wood right here smells like pickles. Um, it's a uh, it's guaranteed for 50 years against termite infestation and fungal rot, things like that. It will not rot, will not expand and contract, will not shrink and swell. Holds paint really good. It's kind of like the answer to not having traditional old growth wood. And this stuff here, you know, what kind of wood is it? It's called a koya. It's a brand name. The uh, see, I used to use cypress, okay, but 
even now I'm going back and fixing failures with Cypress. It's awful. You know? One so. question. When, you, when you're painting, uh, do, you, do you prime generally first? Yes, sir. Do you do, a, do you do an exterior latex or do you use the oil mix? What, what do you prefer? Um, I, you know, I like, okay, as far as primer goes, I like oil primer. You do, uh, prime, prime and paint. Yeah, oil, oil primer throughout. Okay. And then latex on the outside um, and whatever you choose on the inside. Latex on the outside because of the, you know, uh, the expanding contraction and stuff like that. So late, the latex will stick on your oil primer? Absolutely. Right. Sure will. Design that way. Not the other way, though. How are you doing on time? How do you paint uh, sash apart if you've got to replace a uh, piece of wood? That's right. Mm, first Friday. <laughs> 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 That's what I would say. Well, I mean, I mean, there's ways to do it, but how many minutes do we have? One. One. <laughs> All right. In short, there are pins in the corners. Okay, and you can press the pin through, and it'll come out. You know, so little steel pins. More often than not, I mean, 1800s wood pins, but. Mechanized machinery, steel pins. So. Can you purchase board, board replacement glass? What's that now? Can you purchase board replacement glass? Replacement glass, like wavy glass? Well, it's getting harder and harder to find. Mm -hmm. You know, as they throw more and more windows away, you have to go to salvage yards, find a piece, pull it out, clean it, cut it. You know. Shillers, they've got a lot. And they're right across from my shop. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So after you replace the glass and you use some old glass, but you see there's a film on it, how do you clean uh, film off of an uh, old window? Taking it off? Well, let's just say you have an uh, old window that has a film on it. Yeah. And you want the film off? Yeah. Like, is there an abrasive you can use? Uh, typically, if you grab a corner, it will peel off. Um, and it's kind of hard to do, it takes a while, and then it's going to leave a residue, and then you take a little razor blade, clean razor razor blade, new razor blade, and you just got to do the thing, you know, and peel it all away. How do I know this? I've done it. Um, one more question, um, and then I think we've got to wrap it up with the next guy. Oh, that's a product. Well, either you have to replace that piece or you can epoxy it in with a product that we like to use called Abitron. Um, it's an epoxy resin type thing. Um, or you can come to me and have a new sash made. You know? and I, can, uh, I replicate them so that it's the exact spinning image of what you have. You know, so True Morris intended joinery, exactly like they would have done in turn of the century. So it's not fake. It's, it's really old. Awesome. So. Oh, the magic dust. Sorry, the magic dust. That's what that, that's what cleans the oils off of the glass here, so that you don't have fingerprints all over it. I'm sorry, I just get so distracted. I'm telling you, we only got so much time. It's gonna go like that, you know. What is that? It's uh, nothing but that powdered drywall mud you get at Home Depot. Um, the uh, I mean, traditionalists they will they will insist on using whiting. Okay. And what whiting is is calcium carbonate. Uh, the difference between drywall mud and whiting is this has plaster of Paris in it, and you know, you know, whiting is very romantic and expensive. <laughs> you know, uh, this is like eight or nine dollars for a twenty-pound bag. You know, and it lasts forever. So. Anyway, so that's that's it, folks. I I, I wish we could hang out some more. Um, you know. Come and, come and talk to me. Um, and, and I hate to say it, but I have to rush out. My six-year-old has his very first play recital at 11 to play back in Tampa. So um, I had to request the early slot to teach so that I could make it to see his recital. So, you know. Um, What does the magic do?
dust. It absorbs the oils on the glass. On the glass. See, okay. Like there's some right there. It just it, it takes them off. You let it sit, it hardens up. You have to get off the razor blade. Okay. 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 Thank you. So, but like you would measure between this point and that point, this this corner and that corner, you subtract an eight. An eight total or eight by each side. Eight total. And that won't allow for the leaded in the toilet, right? It should. Now, if you're a stained glass person versus his or her salt, they'll have to do that. That's that's important. Dun, dun, dun. So the first time they stay there like a whole day or? Yeah, whole day, all day long. Like eight to four. Eight no, to four. nine to four. Nine to four? Yeah, that's right. As I get there at eight, prep. Yeah. For me, it's eight to five. You got it. Yeah, because yeah, so I'm from Jacksonville. So. Yeah, right on. Somebody came down from Atlanta last time. You saved me. You saved me, man. I was planning to be on the outside of the house the whole time. <laughs> Holy cow. Well, if you don't have to be, I don't even No. Anything but, you know? Yeah. I just want to go up and down on the ladder. Yeah. yeah. No, you don't, you know? Really. You know, because you always pick the worst one. You know, no so if you had to estimate, if you had to do an entire one, you know, scrape into the case thing and replace just make you like a If you had to budget, how much time do you think it would take to do a for a novice or professional? For me. For a novice. For a novice? Uh, I would say it'd take you a few days. I would, for a window? Yeah, I would, you know, the first one I'd probably, I'd allocate a couple, two or three weekends. You know what I'm saying? For one window. For one window. Okay. We'll get faster, you know. How do you shoot, all right, so while you're working on this, you just pop it back in and put the, put the stops in it? Yeah, yeah. I didn't have a chance to talk about that. The very first thing you do is replace the ropes. Very first. Yeah. Replace the ropes. That gives you the ability to put it back in. So, but from a security standpoint, you just kind of pop it in. How do you secure it? Interpret temporarily. Well, you can. Sometimes I'll pop, I'll pop a nail in the top of it so it can't slide in there. You know, or put a stick. In and out. In and out. I'll put one stop back. Okay. But not the other. Because that you can, then you can lift it up and tilt it out. Yeah. I got about 14 to do. Well, I wish I could flip. I have more time. You know? I'm going to try to get together with you on that uh, first Friday. That'd be fun. What time of the day? Is it the morning? Uh, between uh, 9 and 4. Nine, so pretty much the whole day? Yes. Okay. 9 and 4. Steve, what's the purpose of this dust? It uh, absorbs the oil in the uh, putty. Watch. Like, why, don't you want, why do you want to absorb the oil in the putty? I thought you wanted to leave it there. Well, I mean, on the glass. See that, see that smudge? Yeah. Wow. If you let it sit, then it becomes hard, and you have the only way to get it clean is with a razor blade. Yeah, but if you do it now, this one is uh, it erases the whole thing. So I asked the wrong question. Our visitors upstairs, so my husband built the second floor, and he put it in the windows repair. Oh, so where is the landscaping? It's like the landscaping is still of his life. We had to make a last minute change. I'm sorry. I, that works sometimes, you know. Um, it, some, it, something that will eat away the lime, lime away is good, lime you know, away. that type of thing. Uh, I mean, you just have to kind of experiment, you know, okay. because it might be this, it might be that. Yeah. But, you know, very, very, very fine well, steel wool, nice, that helps to, you know, you don't want two courses in a scratch right, in the glass. Right. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Man. Oh, my goodness. Hey, Steve, how are you? Pretty, hey, good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks for uh, rearranging the. Uh, I'm so sorry to give you a tiny room. It didn't even. Didn't oh, it's fine. I mean, it made it much more cozy. <laughs> you know? I missed the class. What's the powder? It's a uh, drywall mud. Oh, and you know that powder stuff. You use it for what? Yeah. It absorbs the oils off of the glass after you glaze. Oh. See, this looks some glazing putty. Watch. Oh, I see. see, it leaves the how it leaves a smudge. Oh yeah, yeah. It's a. Uh, it's drywall. Plant. Yeah, it, it dries it up. Oh, cool. And then it takes off the glass so you don't do it later. You do it later, it's awful. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yes, sir. Um, I think it's going to be at the Boy Scout house in um, Tampa and Seminole Heights. Okay. At the Seminole Heights, you guys know it's church. Okay. I think that's where it's going to be. Okay.